Hello, welcome to episode 12, more like episode 12.1, because I'm actually doing some work that happened. I made an episode, and then I decided I didn't actually like that episode, um, but I didn't want to go back and revert everything, because uh, a lot of it is slogging. Um, so what we're doing now is we're making, we added a new camera control script called Galaxy Controls, which is similar to the ship controls, except for we can't throttle around anywhere. We can only scroll out at the moment. Um, but we're making it so that the camera slowly moves into the correct position, uh, which is below the star map looking up. Okay. So this has a target star, which we set uh, to be just an arbitrary one of the created stars, like so. Uh, so uh, the the target star if it if the target star hasn't been set to anything just set it to the first of the star maps stars so you can see that we have this we also added a variable called seed which we're passing into the stars uh, in an awkward way um, this seed variable is for our use in random map generation so random sector exploration one of the things that we want to be able to do in this game is you want to be able to pass cool seeds to your friends so if you find a really cool sector you just pass them the seed value of that sector and it will regenerate the same way on everyone's machine uh, and so that's why we have defined this seed value when we pass it when we start up a star the star understands the seed value it gets the seed value and then it changes to it changes the seed value by its own position so that it has its own unique seed value um, that meant that when we actually create the stars, the star position has to be passed into the instantiate function rather than set later, uh, because otherwise the star position will be set after we instantiate after we do that that instantiation call. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that this happens immediately after instantiation, and therefore we need to have the position already set because we're using the position here. Okay. Uh, so. We set a couple of variables here, brightness and color, but we're about to do some work on those. Um, so the way it looks right now is I've switched some stuff around, uh, and it's a little bit awkward right now. So right now you can see that uh, as we get further away, all of the stars stay nice and bright. And as we zoom in, they start to shine. So we need to do a little bit of work to make that actually function correctly. So we're going to make it so that that all works great. Um, so uh, we're also going to change these galaxy controls because right now the camera range has no minimum so put that here which means we actually don't need it here there. so right now we set this lens flare brightness and all that stuff but we only have one lens flare we actually need two lens flares we need an outer flare and an inner flare and we're not going to do this require component. We're going to make these manually assigned. And the reason for that is so that we can have several objects with lens flares inside. Just like with particles, you have a core particle effect and then you've got the outside particle effect. Same thing. So we'll go into Unity and we're going to have to pull the star into the star map to actually do this. Uh, except it looks like it's compiled incorrectly. Yeah, we don't, we don't want that there. Just delete it. There we don't need that thing there. All right, so there we are. So uh, here in star, we need to assign one of these as the outer flare and one of these as the inner flare, and I believe that that's what we're going to be doing right here. So the inner flare is going to remain bright all the time, even if you zoom out. That way you'll always be able to see the star. The outer flare is going to be what happens when you start to zoom in, and it gives you details as to the precise nature of the star nature of the star. Well, yeah, I've actually created a little bit of randomness here. So I've got a brightness. Brightness is being assigned. and I'm just going to assign it to a value to... Um, so brightness is going to be between uh, 0.1 and 1. And then we've got a color system here where we assign a random value to R and a random value to B. And then G is equal to whichever one is the least of those, which gives us a relatively bright color. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set the color of the outer and inner flares based on that.
Oh, color.g, what was I just color, there we are. And down here where we set the brightness, we actually only care about the brightness of the outer flare. Um, we're going to we're gonna actually set both brightnesses, but the inner flare's brightness is going to be a much, much more uh, uh, standardized brightness. So it's going to be uh, 1 plus outer flare dot brightness divided by 2. So let's go ahead and just see how that looks. Ah, why is it grinding? It should be... There's no nothing... Oh, I don't know what happened. There shouldn't have been anything slow there. Oh, uh... I forgot to save the... That, the problem is that I forgot to save the, uh, the star here. Click. There we go. So it was getting a whole bunch of... Uh, there we are. That's much better. So you can see that we now have a, a, a panoply of different colors. And as we zoom out, they remain relatively sharp. And in fact, they start to blur together, and you start to get star clusters if you get far enough out. And we get kind of a disco effect. We may put a maximum zoom out so that you can't do that. But as you zoom in, you start to get a new bloom. And that, that, that might actually be a little bit slow. I may want to make that significantly faster, which is easy enough. You just change it so that it's brightness plus 3 divided by camera range. There we are. So camera range is just the Y position of the camera. So there we are. So you can see as you zoom in, you really get a good impression of that star. There we go. So now we have a rather nice way of looking at our star map, but we don't have any kind of actual navigation uh, built in yet. We don't have any way of moving from the star to star, and the stars don't have anything like names or anything like that. And I did do a lot of work off screen. I mean, it was all simple stuff. I just set this up off screen and so on and so forth. Um, if you're lost, let me know, and I'll try and be clear as to what you might have missed. But this is not, this is all stuff that you would just do in your own way. Um, all of this stuff is just your own method of building your own galaxy. So let's go ahead and create uh, just a name generator just, uh, just to give you an impression of how you might do this sort of thing. So here in star, let's go ahead and say public string create star name. Uh, and we're going to use the seed value of this system in that particular way. So we're going to go ahead and say public void reseed. And we're going to copy this stuff. There we are. And this will let us get a good value, the same star name, no matter how many times it's called. So how do you create a star name? Well, most star names are, uh, uh, well, believe it or not, uh, they are mostly Arabic. Uh, but the ones we're most familiar with are often Greek. Um, and we got a whole bunch of stuff in the end, like, you know, sigma and delta. But we're just going to go ahead and create, create some random syllables. And I'm sure you've seen this sort of thing before. And then we're just going to add in things like alpha, beta, sigma to the end. So I'm going to pause it and just fill that stuff in. Actually, I realized that um, I'm going to be doing it in a slightly different way. So uh, I decided I was going to show you at least the basics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into three different functions here. Uh, And this will allow us to quickly create a name that is completely random, rather than just choosing from an arbitrary number of names. And here we just do uh, uh, switch mathf.floor to int random.value times some value, however many phonemes we have. So hard phonemes are things where you, you have, you know, B. That's a hard phoneme. But we're going to use lowercase letters. And so on. I'll finish, I'll finish the rest off screen. But we do the same thing down here. So soft phonemes are vowels. And vowel combinations. Uh, oh, I forgot the S, didn't I? 
Now, slide phonemes are the very the uh, uh, letters which can be used to either slide into or out of a hard phoneme. So. something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of these and I'll see you in a second. A moment for you. Ugh, you know what? I feel dumb. What the heck am I doing? Uh, how do you define an array here? Uh, 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 uh. I think it's like this. And then we'll just say there's no reason to do the switch statement. I'm going to do it in arrays. I don't know what I was thinking with the switch statement. Um, I believe I had to do it this way in one case because I was doing some complicated logic. We're not doing complicated logic. So I'll be back once I've finished filling in like this. All right, so in case you're wondering what the C, the C sharp syntax is for this stuff, it's very simple. Uh, just array, new string, open bracket, then all of the values in the array, and then close, and then just return one element of that. Um, now, I generally arrange arrays into groups of 10, so that's 3, 3, 3, 1, 3, 3, 3, 1, and so on, just so I can count them by my eye. So I can see this is 14 long, and this is 6 long, and this is 13 long. Um, of course, you don't have to do it that way. So up here in create star name, we're just going to go ahead and create a name like this. And then we're going to go ahead and grab some of these. So uh, uh, if random.value is less than 0.4f, um, we're just trying to decide which kind of variable to start with. So uh, if it's less than 0.6f, then get hard phoneme. Uh, make that 0.7. And then we say uh, uh, while random, uh, while name.length is less than 5, uh, less than, hmm, well, name dot length times random dot value is less than five, and that will actually give us an arbitrarily long name, uh, but a minimum of five letters. Uh, if random dot value is less than 0.3, 0.3f, then add a slide. So name plus equals get, uh, and then add a soft phoneme and then add a hard phoneme in the same way we did up here. Actually, we may as well just... put that at the end, and then return name. So what I've just done is I've created a construct here, and then we're just going to go up here, we're going to say name equals get name. Got no get name? create star name. And that should give us a bunch of random star names. So instead of having star clone on the side, it should be... So here you can see we've got a whole bunch of random names here. Um, they are alphabetically ordered, <laughs> just in case you were wondering why we had so many A's. But you can see that these star names are not particularly good. We've got some silly ones. Um, and one of the problems is that the star names uh, can be arbitrarily long, and what we really want to do is just determine their length right up front. So we would just say uh, int max len equals random dot uh, equals mathf dot floor to int random dot value times five plus four. And then here we would just say while name dot length is less than max len, less than or equal to max len, less than that, yeah, there we are. Do this stuff. And then at the end we can add in like a sigma or a delta or a gamma, whatever we would like, um, but I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. We can also capitalize, uh, there's no reason not to. So, uh, you know, you can do anything you'd like with these values, uh, and I'm afraid that as I'm mouse wheeling I'm zooming out, but um, let's change over to scene view, there we go. So you can see that all of these have relatively decent names in terms of how you pronounce them. There are some duplicates. 
uh, like there's lots of ladies in the group apparently and some of them are a little bit unpronounceable for you know magazines all gazed but none of them are so bad that you that you wouldn't be able to think of that you know none of them are are so bad that uh that they would make you think breaking immersion um for example mefazi jikh is really terrible but it's not as bad as some of the ones we've actually seen but you can fix this by weighting those names uh for example we've got a lot of j's so what we may end up doing is going back into here and you can see that J is here in the get hard phoneme string. What we may do is we may just create a section for rare phonemes and a section for common phonemes like so and then we'll just duplicate this one so that they're twice as likely to happen. And then when we restart on uh, unexpected symbol V so when we restart, we get a little bit more waiting. And you can spend all day creating these name conventions uh, as you'd like. Um, so it's up to you how you want to create names. I just thought I'd spend 20 minutes of your time doing it because, hey, I like wasting your time. Man, there are lots of duplicates. We'll need to do some sort of checking for duplicates as well, but that's pretty easy. Um, there's no reason to do it on camera. All right, so that's it. And I hope you didn't mind this long-ass... Uh, episode about making the stars a little bit clearer, and I hope you didn't get lost. And that's it. Next episode, we'll navigate through this star field, and I might make some name changes while you aren't looking. <laughs>